I was thinking we would do something different today. <laughs> Some more good news. Hello and welcome. This is Christina and I am so excited to share good news from Cape Town and around the world because we know that God is always up to something good. The Bible tells us that the prayers of a righteous man and woman avail much. So don't discount your prayers because they accomplish great things. And now, let's get started with the good news. After feeling the call to prayer, Mylene last May and June began to pray for her family. Here she is to share her good news. Uh, the Lord had put it on my heart to form another prayer group. This one is just a prayer call to my family line. So it was, the Lord told me to start praying over from my great grandmother and all to all the generations for salvations, for deliverances, just praying um, for people to come into their right mind, you know, for that deception to fall off of them, we, that they would be break free from addictions and all, all kinds of things uh, in the, the, to all the generations that are still living and basically for salvations and that God would really push on them and push on them and just call them back and just call them and make it so that they're compelled to come to the Lord. And the story doesn't end there. Here is her cousin Katrina to share the fruit of those prayers. Hello everybody. Um, my name is Katrina Block and uh, Mylene Quijano is my cousin. So long story short, uh, in the middle of June, I within one week lost my kids, lost my house, lost my husband, lost my job, I had nowhere to go. Um, and I kind of got brought to my knees and I ended up just going hard for Jesus. I got um, rededicated my life to the Lord. I was really broken down, really going through a lot. Um, and then I was living in this, this kind of this shelter. And so um, you know, God really started speaking to me and uh, you know, I, was, I started fasting. And one day, you know, I was fasting and I you know, started speaking in tongues for the first time. Uh, that was in August, and then, let's see, I re God kept telling, me, kept telling me to reach out to my cousin, Mylene, and I haven't seen her since I was six years old, and we're just friends on Facebook kind of thing, and um, so I did, and I reached out to her, and this was a couple weeks ago, and I kind of, well, we started talking, and, and, and then we start, talked on the phone, and we figured out that she had been praying for my, for my whole entire family to be this curse to be off this family, generational curse to be lifted off of us in May, or, and she stopped praying in June, you know, for that. And then come to find out, I had um, that whole, my whole revelation started in June, and I just, that was good, kind of cool to figure out. So then I, I started talking to her, and then within a week of reaching out to her, I had a job, I had good news on a place to stay, and then um, I had gotten good news um, about getting custody of my kids back. Within the same two weeks, um, the Lord told me to go ahead and go get baptized, and I knew that I, it was like a sense of urgency. I had to get baptized. I had to get baptized, and it ended up being that I was the last out of 88 to be baptized on the Day of Atonement. I love that Mylene's prayers accomplish so much. Even if it seems so inconsequential, God was listening, and Katrina's salvation and being filled with the Spirit is fruit of that she found a church and was baptized. She felt so
such urgency to be baptized that she ended up being fired from her job because she went to be baptized. But God was looking out for her. The next day, she got even a better job that gave her an apartment that would allow her to bring her family home. That's some good news. I wanted to share our first COVID healing story again because it was so powerful. Here is Simone to share her good news. She might have heard the footsteps of death, but death could not take her because people had been praying for her. I was tested positive for COVID-19 in the very beginning of the pandemic here in SA. I'd went for my test the Thursday, the following Monday I got my results and immediately started quarantine. By day three after my results, I was taken to hospital because I was short of breath. When I went there, it was, an, it, it was like a gradual decline as time went along. Um, it became more and more difficult for me to breathe, let alone speak. Um, I'd call home at least once or twice a day, depending on how awake I am, um, to speak with my parents and they'd play with me um, every day to give me strength to get me through the next one. I just want to say thank you. I promise I'll overcome this in just a matter of time. Love you and thank you for playing. I was, I think, a day, a couple of hours away from going on to the ventilator. Um, every day, every day would be some sort of crash scenario. Um, on my 11th day in the hospital, the evening, the ward itself, so it's a state hospital and it's really loud. So the side where I am, it's just myself and on the other side of the ward there's noise all the time. It's machines, it's doctors, it's nurses and um, I was genuinely struggling that night to the point where uh, they didn't quite think that I'd wake up the next morning and so there I was in the hospital and I was concentrating so hard on breathing, I messaged my parents. I said, um, can you please pray with me? I can't pray back, but can you pray for me? Because I feel like I'm about to die. I can't breathe. I called my parents and uh, we prayed together on the phone over video call. That morning, I'm not even sure what time in the morning, but I know it was, it was been super early, maybe three, four o'clock in the morning. Um, the ward became so quiet, so quiet that I woke up from my sleep. And the temperature in the room became like a freezer. So if you in somewhere cold and you breathe out and the mist comes out of your face, out of your mouth, that's exactly how it was. It became so cold and there was not a sound. I couldn't hear anything. And all of a sudden, I felt such a heaviness and could hear wet feet coming towards my bed from the other end of the ward and um, I just knew instinctively I was about to die. This, this was the spirit of death coming to get me and um, all I could do at the time was pray out loud in my mind. I was like, God, please, you actually cannot let me die right now. I have a tiny baby at home. Uh, I have a husband in rehab. I have small children. I have so much more I want to do with my life. I'm not ready. And um, I eventually drifted off to sleep and my stepfather woke up during that time of the morning. He only told me the next day. And he began to pray so fervently because he could feel the spirit of death in the room as well. And he, he so he starts praying for me the following morning. Um, it was as though I was a completely different person to a couple of hours before that. Um, the doctors came in and the, their words were, I couldn't even believe you were alive. And I said, what? And they said they were just expecting me to drift off during the course of the night because my breathing was so labored and so short. Um, they didn't even need to put me on a ventilator at the time because, I mean, it was inevitable I was about to die. Um, they said, and they said, someone must really be playing for you or someone must really be looking out for you. The experience alone made me realize that God is so real that even in your 11th hour, your last moment when you think that's it,
There's no more hope for me. There's nothing more anybody can do for me, not even God. He'll snatch you right out there and he brings you out and he gives you a second chance. He gives you new life. Uh, that's what Corona has taught me. And for all who's suffering from it or affected by it, I hope that in this time you allow the Lord to become real to you like he has to me in that, that um, hospital room that night. Your prayers are powerful. Simone was faced with death, but because of the prayers of her parents, she has life and life more abundantly. Katrina came to Christ because of the prayers of Mylene and her family. So don't discount what you can do for God as you begin to pray. And God will bring about some good news for you and your family. If you have any good news to share, we want to hear it. Send us a message at ghcc.tv forward slash my story or on Facebook Messenger at GHCC Fans. And if you want more hope, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And always remember, there's more good news out there. Christmas Night of Hope. It's time to believe in the hope of Christmas. Friday the 18th of December and Sunday the 20th of December. A Christmas musical spectacular not to be missed. Hello Chelsea. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, JP. All these decorations make me want to deck the halls with boughs of holly. Nice. I'm going to leave the singing to you. We love celebrating Christmas here at Good Oak Christian Center, and that is especially important this year, as so many people around the world are going through so much, because Christmas is about coming together, appreciating what we have, and celebrating life. That's right. Over these past few months, we've missed the hospitality and community that coming together brings. This is the season to open up our homes, our church, and our lives celebrating Christmas together. And Christmas is more than just about the decorations, the treats, the cocoa, and the gifts, although I am a big fan. I wonder what's inside this one. I'm not sure, but not all gifts fit inside a box. Christmas is about a miracle of a baby being born that changed the world. It's about hope, and we all could do with a little hope right now. And now it's time to reveal our countdown to Christmas and give you your exclusive invitation to join in all the merriment, the festivities, the celebration, and the gift of coming together. So take a look at our wondrous gatherings across our campuses and platforms to bring you and your family hope and healing this Christmas season. This is your 2020 Countdown to Christmas. GFCC, we are all about giving hope and healing people all year round. Starting Sunday, November 29th, it's countdown to Christmas. Good Oak Christian Center, some gifts are bigger than a box. Merry Christmas. We look forward to counting down to Christmas with you. What a beautiful good evening to everyone out there. Thank you for joining us for our Throne Room Thursdays. And wow, it's been an absolutely great year. And I say that with confidence because in this year, God has shown himself as our protector, our healer, our provider, 
and he has not changed no matter the season that we find ourselves in and so that we come together once again into your living room wherever you find yourself in whatever country you find yourself in and we simply come in just to worship with you tonight and as you worship right there where you are i pray that the presence of god saturates your home that thing starts to change the, men, the moment you mention the name of Jesus. So Father, tonight we thank you, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that your Spirit of God has no limitation tonight. That your Spirit invades every home. That your Spirit invades every bedroom right now. That your Holy Spirit invades every situation, every challenge these people might be facing, oh God. But when we come before the King, we will leave relief. In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. Come on, can we just lift our voice to him? I just lift our voice and shout. Nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want to be with you. Nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. And all I want to be with you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. All I want to be with you.
presence, Lord. All I want is to be with you. There's nothing like the presence, Lord. All I want. There is nothing like saying, nothing like to worship only you. All I want is to worship you. There's nothing like your presence, Lord. And all I want is to worship you.
trying to work a thousand days David says it's better for me to find my healing in the presence of God in one day in one moment with him than going to the hospital for thousands of days when you come into the presence of the Lord there is healing when you come into the presence of the Lord there's a strength that takes place a renewed strength when you come into the presence of the Lord there's a joy that springs up inside of you. And so tonight, just enjoy His presence. Just start to open up your mouth and sing love songs to the one who loves you most. We worship your name, O oh God. How great is you? How great you are, O oh God. The whole earth is filled with your glory. The heavens are the
every pressure of life has to leave when the presence of God steps in because when he steps in he steps in with love but he steps in with power and authority so tonight right there where you are you might have felt disappointment in this day someone has let you down something might have gone wrong but let me tell you something God has already made a way out for you God has already made a way in a, of escape for you God has already covered you so that you don't walk with shame God has already put his blood on you that no weapon formed against you will prosper so right there where you are forget what has happened and forget what for, start to remember what he has done forget what someone has done to you and remember what God is for you we worship you tonight oh God presence is fullness of joy our hearts overflow our hearts overflow oh. come on lift up a sound to him
for what has been stolen. Speak peace to every soul. Let there be freedom in your presence. Sing it again. Sing it over your life right now. right now. something that happens when you say the name of Jesus when you start when you start to sing songs to the creator and describe who he is he comes and he shows you who he is he says I will restore your marriage I will show you I am your healer I will you I will show you I'm your way maker I will pitch up and I will show you oh, the great and mighty things I can do sing of the Lord no limit to you no boundary to you, O oh God. All oh, powerful Lord. And here in your presence, and we are run. I'm in your presence, oh God. Here. 
glorious, in every way. Glorious, magnificent. You are wonderful, beautiful, glorious, matchless in every way. Wonderful. Someone needs to sing it tonight. right now. Everything changed. 
because it's out of our control those are the moments where Lord God we know that you are in control where our strength ends oh God that's where you kick in when sometimes we run out of solutions oh God and there's so much things happening and we want to run left and want to run right I'm reminded of the story in the Bible as David takes the ark and it brings it back to Jerusalem that carried the ark which represents the presence of the Lord the Bible says it got knocked and the ark was about to fall off the cart but one of the men grabbed the ark and the Bible says right there and then he was struck dead you see when things get out of control it's not for us to start taking control and doing what we think is right. The presence of the Lord is represented, the ark is represented by the presence of God. You have to know the presence of God is holy. We can't just pitch up and do what we think is right. There's a protocol in how to approach the presence of God. And the Bible says he was struck dead. So much so that David and his men were fearful. And the ark, the presence of the Lord, was left at Obed-Edom's house. Because Obed-Edom was a doorkeeper. And the lineage of Obed-Edom, they were all were doorkeepers in the house of God, in the tabernacle. Obed-Edom knew how to honor the presence of God. And the Bible says Obed-Edom's house was blessed. His family was blessed. His sons and his children's children were blessed. God speaks to David. I'll give you the short version. And David tells the people, the Levites, he tells all of them, listen, you've got to up your game. We can't just approach God's presence just any old how. He's a holy God. There is protocols that needs to be done. There's preparation that needs to be made if you want to touch the heart of the king and experience the power in the presence of a king. And David gets the entire house in order then goes back to Obed Edom's house because they were in order I pray tonight as you experience the presence of God 
that you realize and you look in yourself and you say to yourself, man, I, I, I've approached God's presence just any old how, forgetting that He's holy, that He's just and true in all His ways, that He doesn't need me, but I need Him. So tonight, right there where you are and you might be watching, there's nothing like the now just to say, Lord, please forgive me. Just like David did, forgive me, oh God, for approaching you old, any old how, because my life was in such a mess. I just came any old how. No, there's preparation. Lord, please forgive me. And God will forgive you. And then you start to prepare yourself for his presence. Take time out and prepare yourself as you enter his presence. It's not just about song. It's about the condition of your hearts. You are a great God. Come and lift your hands one more time to Him. And let's just tell Him one more time how great He is. Just one more time how great and marvelous He is. Not about us, we lay our crowns down, but it's about you, oh God. it in time but I pray that the worship that you experienced tonight has changed something in your life it's nothing about us it's about the presence it's about your hunger for the things of God and so I pray that as you watched tonight and participated in worship that there's a solution that comes healing came God has restored your joy and your strength tonight and I want to encourage you one more time that in order for us to do what we do, and that is spreading the word of God, not only within this building, but outside of this building in our outreaches, in our feeding schemes, especially in the season that we are in right now, we're going into a festive season. And many are approaching this festive season with much caution because of everything that has transpired. But I want to encourage you, Jesus still came in a manger. Hope has arrived. And no matter what happens around us, when Jesus steps in, things have to change. And so we would like you to partner with us as you sow your seed into this ministry, into this fertile soil where we are able to meet the needs of others, be it in clothing, being in food, be it the way we do our outreaches, that you are a part of that worship that we experience as well and so I want to encourage you to go to the link on our Facebook and you can simply just give right there however amount you God has laid upon your heart tonight and thank you for always joining us faithfully but let's pray tonight father we thank you tonight we thank you for your faithfulness we thank you Lord God you never change but the Bible says you are the same yesterday today and forevermore and even as we even close this session of throne room down, the praise and worship remains in our homes right now. I pray that men and women, Lord God, as they rise up in the morning, as David says, early will I rise and I will seek the face of God. Give these your people a hunger to worship and praise you, O oh God. I pray as they start to worship you in spirit and in truth, that Father, you will open up doors over their life that no man can shut. I pray the blessing over this people right now. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. 
May the Lord lift up his countenance and give you his peace. We love you and thank you for joining us tonight. God bless you. Have a fantastic weekend that lies ahead. Goodbye and we love you. My God, how great you are. Oh, sing it again tonight. And my God.